Although there are over 1,000 fish species swimming in North American waters, recent surveys rate bass as the number one most targeted fish, even ahead of panfish like bluegill and crappie. Over the last several years, bass fishing has gone from a weekend hobby to a multi-million dollar industry, including professional bass fishing leagues, $80,000 bass boats, and more lures than you can ever imagine. Despite the enormous bass fishing market, all of bass fishing can be summarized in just about 15 minutes. Ready? Let's go. There are three main species of bass targeted in North America, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, and spotted bass. Some people say that a bass is a bass is a bass, but this is simply not true. Largemouth bass, also known as largies and bucket mouse can further be categorized into northern largemouth, Florida largemouth, and H1 hybrids. The mix of the two subspecies produces the biggest largemouth in the world, which happens to be over 22 pounds. Largemouth is probably the most widespread among the bass species, found in neighborhood ponds, natural lakes, rivers, creeks, reservoirs, all 50 states, and literally around the globe. Largemouth can be identified by their colors and markings, but the most identifiable trait is its mouth. When the, its mouth is closed, the jaw will extend past the eyeball, hence the name largemouth. Smallmouth bass, also known as smallies or footballs, tend to be more curious and aggressive than largemouth and are known to be the hardest fighting of the bass species, sometimes jumping five feet in the air and never giving up. While they may be more aggressive than largemouth, they don't grow as big, with the world record coming in at 11 pounds, 15 ounces. Bass fishermen will also tell you that there's a difference between northern smallmouth and southern smallmouth. Smallmouth can be found in different bodies of water, but they tend to thrive in creeks, natural lakes in the north, and clear water reservoirs. They can be identified by their brown color, vertical bars, and when its mouth is closed, the jaw will not extend past the eyeball. Obviously why it's named smallmouth. Spotted bass, also known as spots or Kentuckys, also have many subspecies, including Alabama spotted bass and Kentucky spotted bass. Spots can thrive in very clear reservoirs as well as heavily stained river systems. The biggest spotted bass ever caught was 11 pounds, four ounces. Although they look similar to a largemouth bass in color, spots tend to have an extremely dark and blotchy lateral line with dark spots occurring just above and just below. Their jaw will not extend past the eyeball and there is a very recognizable rough patch on their tongue that feels like sandpaper. While these three species are the most targeted bass, it should also be known that there are other bass species like shoal bass and mean mouth, which is a cross between different bass species. Interestingly enough, all of these bass species actually fall under the sunfish family, while fish species like striped bass and white bass actually fall under the bass family. In order to catch largemouth, smallmouth, and spotted bass, you might think that lure selection is the most important element. While this is very important and we will discuss it shortly, the most important element of bass fishing is knowing where bass are located. You can throw the right lure all day long, but be in the wrong location and you will never catch a bass. But you can throw the wrong lure in the right location and you will still fill your live well. So let's talk about bass locations starting with the spawn. Bass love to spawn in stable water when the water temps are in the 60s during the spring, with March through May being the biggest spawning months across the nation. However, if you live in southern states, states like Florida and Texas, your bass can start spawning as early as January if water temps are right. And occasionally you will even see a fall spawn. However, if you live in the northern part of the country, then the majority of your fish may not spawn until June. Bass need three things in order to spawn, sunlight, hard bottom, and protected water. They need sunlight to fertilize their eggs. So bass typically make their beds in less than five feet of water. However, the clearer the lake you are fishing, the deeper the sunlight can penetrate and the deeper the bass can lay their eggs. Hard bottom is a must in order to lay their eggs with rock and sand being among their favorites. They will not lay their eggs in a soft bottom like silt or mud or muck. However, if there is hard cover on soft bottom like a tree stump, a large single boulder, roots of aquatic vegetation, or even a piece of PVC pipe, bass can and will lay their eggs on that hard cover. Protected water also means still water. Bass will not spawn 
pond where current can wash away their eggs. Largemouth bass really love to spawn in extremely protected pockets and coves, whether you are fishing a lake, reservoir, or river. When it comes to a pond, largemouth can typically be found spawning on the outside perimeter. Although smallmouth also like protected water, you're going to find them spawning in more open water areas and on the main lake or just inside major creek arms and bays. One of the best areas to find smallmouth spawning is on large shallow flats that contain boulders or rock clusters. Spotted bass tend to be a mix of both species with some bass spawning on the main lake and some spots spawning in pockets. One of the reasons it's important to know where bass spawn is because it will help you locate bass throughout the rest of the year. While bass will move throughout a body of water during the year, many times you will find the best populations of bass near the best spawning grounds. For example, here's Kentucky Lake, one of the biggest lakes in the nation, over 160,000 surface acres made from the Tennessee River. It would take several lifetimes to fish all around the water of this lake. This creek arm here is Big Sandy, and although it is its own river, it acts as one of the biggest spawning grounds for Kentucky Lake. Therefore, even during the summer, it is best to eliminate water and fish around the mouth of Big Sandy because you know a huge population of bass live in this general area. You can apply this to all the lakes that you fish. After bass spawn, the majority of them will start making their way out to the main lake, typically settling on main lake structure and cover where they will spend the rest of the summer. It is important to know that structure and cover are not equal. Structure refers to the arrangement of natural physical features of an area, also known as topography. Basically, I'm referring to the features of the bottom of a lake, which include underwater humps, ledges and drops, creek channels and ditches, points and flats. Cover is just what it implies. This is an object that provides cover for bass and its prey, which can include brush piles, aquatic vegetation, docks, stumps, etc. During the summer, on lakes that have a lot of contour lines, such as Highland and Midland Reservoirs, it is typically best to focus your attention on main lake structure, such as points, humps, and ledges. On lakes that don't have many contour lines, such as lowland reservoirs, or natural lakes in both the north and the south, it is best to focus on main lake cover, such as grass lines, brush piles, and stump. When it comes to ponds, most ponds are shaped like natural lakes. They don't have any contour lines and they are basically like an upside down frisbee. So when I'm fishing a pond during the summer, I will target main lake, I mean main pond cover. Sometimes this can be a sunken brush pile or weeds in the middle of a pond, and sometimes this can be a water fountain in the middle of a pond. Heavy cover around the perimeter of the pond can also be a great place to catch bass. You may be thinking to yourself, Tyler, there are thousands of structure and cover elements in your local body of water. So where exactly will the fish be during the summer? Well, this 100% depends on if there is food or bait in the area. If there is bait present in an area, then you are more than likely to catch a bass in that area. You might fish 10 different points in the summer, but only one has bait balls around it, and that is typically where you will find a group of bass. Whether you fish from the boat or from the bank, a lot of times you can visibly see bait, which lets you know that you are in the right area. You might see balls of shad just below the surface, or you might hear bluegills eating bugs in aquatic vegetation, which makes a snap noise. Speaking of shad and bluegills, you should know that bass are opportunistic feeders, which means if an opportunity presents itself, a bass will take advantage of it, which also means bass will eat just about anything that moves. If a baby duck gets too close to the water, bam. Or if a frog makes a wrong move at a wrong time, bam, they gone. With that being said, shad, bluegill, and crawfish are probably the most widespread food that bass eat across the country. However, if you live in the south like Florida, golden shiners may be a bass's number one meal. If you live in the north, gobies, alewives, and perch may be the best food for bass. If you live in California, trout and hitch are meals for the biggest bass in your lake. Or maybe you live in the Carolinas, where striper fish fishermen have introduced blueback herring and ocean species to inland reservoirs. 
which caused bass to suspend higher in the water column than most lakes around the country. All in all, it is really best to spend time figuring out what type of bait lives in your lake so that you can better understand the bass and their behavior. Bait is also the most important factor when it comes to finding bass in the fall. As winter approaches, bass are going to feed heavily in preparation for colder water temperatures. Fall can be a tricky time of the year because there is bait fish everywhere from the most recent bait fish spawns. And bass can be found in super shallow water and very deep water and everywhere in between. Bass that are super spread out means that you typically have to cover a tremendous amount of water and you will catch one fish here and one fish there. Heading into winter, bass are typically going to be found relating to some of the deepest water that is in your body of water. Structure and cover elements near deep water will be where the bass are. It is important to know that deep is a relative term. This could be eight feet of water in a pond or 80 feet of water in a reservoir. With all that being said about bass location, you should know that there are two very big outliers that will change the location of bass. That is aquatic vegetation and current. Any body of water where aquatic vegetation like hydrilla, coontail, and milfoil is prevalent, bass are going to be relating heavily to it. For instance, you may fish a lake that has a tremendous amount of structure options for summertime bass like humps and ledges. However, if the lake has a lot of vegetation, you might find more bass in the grass than out on structure. Current is also an outlier, especially during the summer. Current means water movement, which means cooler water temps, more oxygen, and more bait fish. All reasons why bass love current. Areas that have a lot of current, you're going to typically find bass relating to it. They may not be in the current, but they will be close to it in eddies and soft current areas. Now that we know where bass are located, let's talk about lure selection. There are two main categories of lures, horizontal lures and vertical lures. Horizontal lures are meant to be worked horizontally in the water column. These are lures like chatter baits, spinner baits, jerk baits, crank baits, etc. Vertical lures are baits that you cast out and let sink vertically to the bottom, where then they can be worked across the bottom, like Texas rigs, jigs, Ned rigs, shaky heads, etc. Now some vertical lures can also be fished horizontally like a jig aka a swim jig. So when we talk about lure selection, keep that in mind. Selecting a lure comes down to matching the bait profile and selecting the right color. Matching the bait profile is exactly what it sounds like. You want to choose a lure that best represents the bait or food that a bass is eating in your body of water. Maybe you're fishing a pond or lake where bluegill is the main forage. In that case, a chatterbait or a jig can really match a bluegill profile. Or maybe you're trying to match a crawfish. In in that case, a Ned Rig or a crankbait reel across the bottom can really mimic a crawfish well. In both of these examples, I gave you one vertical lure and one horizontal lure. So how do you know which one to throw? Experimenting with both and seeing how the bass respond is typically best. However, you can choose a vertical or horizontal lure based upon the water conditions. The best way to explain water conditions is to explain them in terms of sound. You should fish horizontal lures in noisy and loud conditions, and you should fish vertical lures in silent conditions. Think of it this way. If you get to a body of water and it's sunny, there's zero wind and the water is super clear. That is the definition of silent water. That is the most silent water conditions can be. There is nothing impacting the water at all. Variables that make water loud include cloud cover, wind, and water color. Therefore, the loudest of water conditions would be cloudy, very windy, and muddy water. You don't have to have all three variables to have loud conditions. You simply just need one. For instance, if you get to the water and it's sunny and you have clear water, but it's very windy, that would fall under the loud conditions category and fast moving horizontal lures will work well. Now again, this is just a starting point, but bass don't always read the same books that we do. So now we know what type of lure to choose and what conditions to fish it under. So we now need to know what color do we use. An easy fallback is always choosing a color that looks like the bait the bass are eating. For instance, if the bass are feeding on crawfish, then green pumpkin might be the best bet. If the bass are feeding on shad, then going with white or bait fish colored might be the best bet. However, water conditions can impact lure color greatly. When it comes to lure color, we basically have dark colored lures, natural 
colored lures and bright colored lures. But instead of thinking of them like this in a straight line, I want you to think about them like this, kind of like a greater than symbol. The further a bass can see in the water, the more natural of a color you want. The less a bass can see in the water, the brighter or darker you can go with. Two variables that impact how far a bass can see in the water include water color and the amount of light penetration. In clear water, a bass can see well, so natural colors are going to work best. However, you may have water that is clear, but you are fishing during low light conditions. This impacts how far a bass can see, and so therefore darker and brighter colors will still work, although you are fishing clear water. If you feel like you understand bass fishing a little better, then please subscribe. Please also consider supporting the channel by clicking the link in the description and purchasing a bass hat for your beautiful head. If you ever wanted to know where tournament cop bass go after they have been released, then click on this video right here. I'll see you guys in the next one.